I'm gonna switch over. <laughs> I literally said three seconds and uh, to tell Ian to be quiet, and I turned my mic on as I said it. Oh, uh, Ian's not on though. I, Here he is. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank God. I thought you were saying the mic was on the entire time, no, no, which no, would no, have no, been no. bad, everybody. <laughs> it would have been that bad. We were just swearing a bunch. <laughs> we got to get him but out before the, good the stream. Swears. No yeah, bad swears. swears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no bad we're not, swears. We're not hateful people. Where's my camera? There's my camera. We are the I two trouble... samurai, though. Hi. I have trouble with phone camera because I want to look at my face, but I'm not <clears> supposed <throat> to. I have to look at the camera. True. Um, so uh, people still have it. can't see you yet. Hmm? But um, you know what? I should make a full screen webcam that has your little face at the bottom, too. I, yeah. Well, I, I don't know if you've seen the one I was doing for Astroneer, but it's just a straight side by side. Yeah. I, I'm, let me just. I don't know you. that. I should revert that, though, because you don't deserve a side by side. You wow. do deserve the corner. Wow. Let me see if I can do webcam Ian. Wait. Crap. Hi. No, I didn't do it yet. Hi. I'm just. <clears throat> um, I'm uh, delaying Hi. everybody. I'm delaying for some reason. Uh, cause, Hi. You know, I want to chat for a little bit. Only a little bit. Oh How's my gosh, it going? You're ginormous. Did you you went Maybe somewhere right there? Do you want to talk about Look that? Is that on the table? Oh, I'm gonna make you a little. I think did I go somewhere? I don't think I went anywhere. Didn't you say you drove to somewhere? Friday. Uh, I w no. Oh 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 oh. Friday. I so I worked a half day on Friday. I had to go to, out to Long Island to pick up a thousand dollar lens that we bought off some guy for three seventy five uh, for work. Wow. Which. We couldn't tell if he was just trying to ditch it or I, my was theory bad. was he bought, he bought it or my theory was he bought it off someone else for 375 and that person didn't know how much it was worth. But then George's oh. theory was he bought it with a camera and so didn't yeah. thought the camera was more expensive. Anyways, so we got that and then we had to go to New York city and I had to go to my boss's apartment and get all this stuff. It was Ew. pretty, it was, it was That's annoying, disgusting. but I was stuck in a car all day. Um, and I oh, forgot we yeah, were going to Long stuff. Island, so I didn't pack anything. I just like thought we were going to the office, so I went downstairs and like my phone almost died. I like was I had to pee oh. so badly. Anyways, um, couple updates. You I know bought... what else? Just um, oh, sorry, go. just just Ugh. to touch on the, uh, the, the one of the worst things about COVID. One of the worst is things. that it's like perfect time for a road trip right you're working from home i know you're just like i'm pen up let's go do a road trip but you can't stop and eat anywhere you can do drive through but drive through's not great you're, you can't really visit anywhere like uh we do a we try to do an annual fourth of july around fourth of july convertible trip where in one day we drive two and a half hours to the beach we drive down the beach for like an hour and then we drive two and a half hours home yeah. But all the things we do to get out of the convertible and out of the heat, like stop for a movie, go to a nice restaurant, go to an arcade, walk the boardwalk, can't do any of that. So a road trip is just stuck in the car, yeah. literally stuck in the car the whole time. And it's the worst. Although went out to Long Island, not a single person wearing masks. There was like a children's camp going on. <laughs> That's like disgusting. Isolated society, apparently. Um, quick update. I bought a brand new light and everything came today. Except the light. The light's coming tomorrow. I'm so mad. <laughs> Everything was I was like, about to say, it looks good. Looks I was, good. I was, so it's just a light panel with a soft box. But I was going to pick it up at B&H mm -hmm. yesterday. But I was like, you know what? I'll Amazon it. It's like a $3 price difference. And it'll say it'll get here tomorrow. Um, and it's, it's coming on Sunday. What did get here today is my mm -hmm. Death Stranding tape. Void if tampered. Oh. It's, a, it's, it's pretty cool. And it's only like... It was that only, is pretty cool. Look how cool. That comes out pretty cool. And, I, and I got a bunch of random stickers. They were like, the website was having a sale. Um, so I just bought. You ever think about your eyelids and how they feel like pickles? They do kind of feel like. You know what? They do kind of feel like your eyelid. I got to put this over. I here. need to fix. Uh, the problem I have with my lighting is that I basically, this mobile cam, it just blows me out. But yeah. it's, but then so, my phone camera is just like auto exposure and like crazy. So I can't really, all my lights are over stuff. here. So I'm going to use, and now that I keep my camera on my monitor, I'm going to use that arm Karen gave me and put the, the light panel over here and have it this way and try to match the color temperature. Um, Cause it's That's got an adjustable. Uh, other thing I got Ian 
is a 10 pack of erasers for panel lining. Eraser, eraser, eraser. Because oh. I was destroying Oof. pencils. Um, I don't. I don't mean to. I don't mean to. Ooh, buddy, that that works fine. But no, I know something I found works better. You know those erasers that are shaped like clicky pens, and you just click the whole thing out. Yeah, those work really well because you can exacto knife and cut them into points or corner edges if you need to. So, th- and they're pretty tiny. That was my thing. Is I was like, that's still good though. Uh, but so I was destroying pencils because I was only using the erasers, and then I was like, <laughs> this was five dollars for 10 of these that's good or no it might be more. no it was 10 and i was like that exact situation if i need to get into a spot i can just cut up half of this or like make yeah. a little custom thing to fit so plus that feels more solid than the pen yeah so yeah that's fair that's but fair. uh and i also like if i really need have a tough spot i'll just isopropyl and get rid of it mm-hmm. anyways let's get to the game i just want to do a little show hey, and uh, tell. real quick before you do that yeah it might be a good time to to bump up your stream audio a bit. Bump up my stream audio a little bit. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I would say just add like three dB to everything. I'm talking right now. I should be tickling the red. That looks good. Hey, Macarena. That's good. That looks. Good. I'm I'm like constantly worried. I'm gonna overblow everything. No, no, I I, I know. I just noticed during the Sea of Thieves stream that. It's yeah, a that's low. fine. Uh, then turn your system volume up. You know what? That's the one thing that annoys me about Giant Bomb sometimes is the variance of uh, audio across Honestly, east-west sometimes. Yeah, I also want to say their production quality is not that great. For all the tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment they talk about all the time, that's true. their production quality does not match that. Yeah. It's not bad, but it's not. It's, it's not I feel it's like not a lot of that of stuff equipment they're using. is back-end, like making things easier on the back-end. Because, like, all that stuff yeah, auto-records multiple recordings and, like, puts it all together. That's true. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's just funny, like, how much effort they put into the streams. And and their streams always, almost always start late. And they're not good quality. And it's Ugh. like, you got to put some more production on Finday. Yeah. Okay, folks. Uh, I'm going to transition over here to the game. This is Ghosts of Tsushima. Uh, Tsushima. Um, hey. Tsushima. Hey. That's the correct pronunciation. Good job. I know it is. I was going to bring that up. Because they, well, so you brought that up the other day, and I was like, oh, that's true. I should make sure I get it right. And then the guy at the beginning of the game says it like that. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's pretty good. But that's also, true. I was reading, there's a lot of hype for this game in Japan because it is a completely made by non Western developer. And they wanted to see how they interpreted like Japanese culture and everything. They want to see how the white boy be. Yeah. yeah. They want how to see the how the white boy, boy be. be. That's exactly what it said. Um, I don't know where I'm going. Let me just... I'm going to mark... I saved... I'm like maybe an hour into this game. I was kind of saving it for some stuff. Oh, okay. See, I'm like I'm like four or five hours in. Yeah. I'm... Is silver... So... Is gold harder or is gold easy? I don't think... So. Uh, what's that silver one? Can you go to that silver, silver one? Silver is there? Sensei and the student. Sensei. And say, no, I'll um, do this one because I'm closer. N- yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you think so? The, I, the, the tip that I read and that has helped me is like that story and the other like pseudo main quest story. You want to do at least one or two parts of that at the beginning because they do unlock stuff. Like, you yeah. know, how this mission you already did that gave you the bow. Yeah. So you wanted to kind of get that out of the way because it's actually unlocking base abilities. That was stuff. honestly my forethought when I first saw it. I was like, there's a picture of a bow there. I'm going to go do that one to get the bow. Yeah. So you're an hour in. How are you feeling about this game? First impressions, last impressions. Uh, Give me your final review score. Go. Final review score. 10 goose chickens out of 85,000 goose chickens. Um... That's Why? really low. You were going for a joke score? I was. A joke score? I forgot But you change. just slashed. I forgot you to just, change the second thing. <laughs> straight stabbed this game to death. Um, wow. If you give me a second, I'm going to do some math. <laughs> ten, ten. Oh, man. You just went crispy eight, on five, the stream. Six, six, six. Whoops. Yeah, what did I give it? I gave it like a point. Eight. 10 divided by 8500. Zero, zero. Okay, now let me do that as a percentage. It is a. 
Uh, it's it's given me scientific notation. Uh oh. Ten divided by. Oh, where's my horse? No, it's like a point zero 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 one percent. Nice. Oh, I didn't mean to step on a hundred percent. Oh, I didn't mean to go into photo mode. Sorry. Um, go ahead. Tell me about Anyways, your boys. Anyways, I like this doing? game. I like that you can pick up supplies while on your horse. Uh, yes, one of my favorite that. things. Um, I thought, look, I like the combat, but the first like couple of fights I was in, uh, especially in like the bow mission. I thought I kept dying. I thought they were really hard because yes. they like all come at you at once. But once you kind of learn to deal with them, it can get a little bit easier. Yeah, they don't they don't really baby the introduction of combat, even though they're doing the tutorial thing where they're like they're like pause and they're like, hey, do this now. Yeah. It's still it, not in a bad way, but it, they definitely don't handhold you for too long. Um, well, this game's running a little that. extra rough because. Sometimes the Elgato pass through just like hurts it. It's crap. Yeah. I don't get it. Hi, Gibson Renee. Um, What's up? Yeah. So it's. How about performance wise? Um, Besides the Elgato. You know, I, I've seen some hitching or like low frame rate. Uh, but other than that, it hasn't really been that. Yeah, I think my main problem was I, I may have tweeted too soon because um, it turns out I was getting some hitching, but it was worse because my TV, new TV, I hadn't set the PlayStation input to game mode yet. Ah. So so it was like it was it wasn't handling the very it wasn't handling the variable frame rate very well. So it was like doubling the hitch. So once I put it on game mode, it got better, but it's definitely still dropping down to 25 or 27 FPS in certain places, which is my when I first started this game, literally my first two thoughts in this order were this game looks incredible, like graphically incredible. Why do we need next gen? And then I immediately hit a frame hitch and I said, oh, that's why we need next gen. <laughs> Sensei. It like literally me. back to back yes. thoughts. Yeah. Why do we need the next gen? Oh, because it doesn't run well. <laughs> That's why. Game does look really good. Yeah, it looks very good. Um, other impressions. She is not samurai, but she is a born killer. Um, other impressions. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the wind thing yet. But it's a yeah, good it's, compromise yeah. for no mini map. I like that there's no mini map. Yes, I love that. Yes, yes, because I'm looking at the world now. I'm not looking at a UI element. Yeah. Um, but I, it's sometimes I feel like I'm hitting the wind button more often than I sh want to be. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, like I'm. I can see it, but it's also like not quite enough for me to get the direction of it. So then I'm hitting it. Yeah, that makes sense. When she betrayed my trust, I punished her. It must have been But yeah, it is it is a gorgeous game. Let's go back to the combat real quick. But after that initial bump in difficulty, which I think is just like growing pains in a way. Mm -hmm. um, same thing I had. I had the exact same thing. After that initial, how are you feeling? I'm still feeling good. I, that standoff thing's really cool. Oh, um, I love it. Although there's sometimes I want to use it and it doesn't do anything. Yeah. Yep. And I'm like, oh. But I think I'll like learn what situations that works over time. Also, there's a fight in the beginning that you're supposed to lose that gave me no indication and i was like really how, trying hard <laughs> and i was like how, how long did you last in that how long did you last in that fight not super long i it dawned on me after i noticed uh -huh. his health wasn't moving at all um yeah that i was like not supposed to be doing well what are you waiting for but uh i was like they're like three minutes there where i was just like man this guy is so hard like they <laughs> just taught me how to dodge wait did you say three minutes well, not like, like okay. brain three minutes. 
Oh, How did okay. this guy get Because I was, I was, um, I, that fight for me lasted about 10 seconds. And during that 10 seconds, I was this like, oh, I'm not going to do well at no. this. And then I was like, I think I'm hitting him, but his health bar isn't moving, but maybe I'm bad. And then I was like, oh, I'm dead. And then it immediately went to a cutscene, and I was like, oh, I guess I was supposed to lose it. <laughs> like, I didn't have enough time to get frustrated because I was bad anyway. Well, I was like, is this a cutscene of me dying or is this a cutscene that's supposed to happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Find out where they went. But yeah, I'm really I'm uh, I'm really enjoying the combat. I think it does a very good balancing act between Soulsborne, where it can be rather punishing, and something like Assassin's Creed, where it's a bit too arcadey, mm -hmm. or or even like Batman, like Arkham Knight series. Um, so I think it does a really good job of just doing that balance where. It's a little bit forgiving, but at the same time, there is still definitely a challenge in it. Like if you're if you're off your game, you can get taken pretty quick. But with the resolve and the quick heal, you can bounce back. Um, and I feel really comfortable with it now. I've actually done. I'm only four or five hours into the game, um, but I've cleared two bases now. I don't think you've cleared a base yet, but a base has like. It's got to have like at least 25 or 30 guys in it. And it's pretty big. If you just think like a Far Cry outpost, but more people. Yeah. Um, All right, I gotta turn. And so that's down that's definitely the type head. of thing where you, you end up getting in these like like one v four, one v five fights. It can get even worse than that if you're not careful, and there's like a mini boss and all this stuff. So I'm I'm actually comfortable enough that I just like I don't want to say I walk right into those situations, but I I don't fear them. I I, I take care. So uh, I'm enjoying the combat. I'm definitely I'm not a super combo. Soulsborne combat oh, no. fan type of oh, person, no. but I am enjoying it. Oh no. It, what oh, is no. that? Can you tell what the, is that a dog? I thought it was a goat. Yeah, oh, I thought no. it was like a sheep. I still don't know what it is, to be honest with you. Is it, is it just the left stick and circle the dodge? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't do a big dodge, but it's enough to get you out of the way. I hate archers. Archers in this game are OP for no reason. Especially in situations where there's more than one of them, or where you're in combat and there's an archer. Yeah. They're just like... They're way too accurate. Uh, yeah, it's mostly it's mostly that they're too accurate. I know they try to do it's the like, thing where they're like, they'll yell the name of the Mongol, to, and that's when you know they're about to fire. But I'm like, that doesn't help yeah. me in combat. Good work. Yeah, especially when they're like, and it's also just frustrating when you're in combat with somebody and you're like rolling and you're fighting them and all of a sudden an arrow comes out of nowhere and hits you. And it's like, how did he land that? I'm rolling all yeah. over the place. Yes. Um, oh, I forgot I got the kunai now. I think I just got that. Plus the other thing is auto aim is off by default. So they're like nailing you and then you take out your bow to like quick fire back at them and you're like, nope, got to take my time and aim at them. <laughs> And it's it, it's it can be pretty annoying. I can see why Tomoe attacked you. Oof, burn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, something else. I what about saying. um? What about the what about the world? I think the world's world really building physical space. Yeah, I'm excited to explore it. I know a lot of people are uh, like about. Uh, like which question marks are worth it? Sort of, you can't really tell. But I, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm a checklist gamer anyway, so kind of doesn't matter yeah. to me. I um, I think the world looks great and it has interesting places. But the problem that I'm having is they're they're occasionally trying to do the Breath of the Wild thing where they're like show you a vista and maybe a couple locations you want to visit. But a majority of the game, you are in like what the environment is almost confining in a way, if that makes sense. There's mm -hmm. a lot of locations where you end up like in a forest and you can't see anything or you're in a clearing and then there's the forest in front of you or you're in a village with temples surrounded by mountains. So it just even though it's an open world, it doesn't really feel like an open world because it's hard to see landmarks. Or you'll die. And yeah. so it's just a series of what feels like small spaces that are barely interconnected 
Yeah. So even though I've been, I've only been playing for five hours, I've been staying within mostly the same area, like the center of that southern big island. And I just have like barely any sense of spatial awareness. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I just, yeah, I, I like the world is beautiful and there's a lot of beautiful places in it, but I don't think they're doing a, a good job of linking those places together or revealing the world to you in a way that that has it um, feel cohesive before you. Exactly. Yeah. And like, I don't mean to just keep talking about uh, Breath of the Wild. But Breath of the Wild did a fantastic job of that, where they were like, this is a big world, but we're going to kind of, no matter which direction you go, Look, there's like kind of a natural guide in a way, both in the landmarks you see that you gravitate towards, the easy paths versus the hard paths, that kind of unfolds these areas ahead of you. And you learn them, and then you learn how they interconnect with other areas. Oh, you, you unlocked the uh, slowdown? Yeah, I... I was kind of mad because I, I didn't realize it was manual slowdown. What is that? Yeah, mean? that's why I didn't unlock it. Yeah, I, I didn't read the whole text. Hey, I dodged that. I, I think at some point I, I may just turn the auto aim on. So that the bow becomes kind of like a quick reaction. Excuse me. Forgot I had that. I got murdered. Um, I will tell you, there is an ability in this game. I just unlocked it, but it's very useful. Which is, it's basically like when you go down, you can spend two resolve to come back up with like 10% health. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I and feel I, like I miss it. It's great. It's great. Yes, a lot. And the heals do take a little bit of time. So, and it doesn't give you a lot. So there's plenty of times where I heal and then I get hit and I immediately lose it. So I have to heal again. Oh, you dead boy. Oh, I'm sorry, I ripped your throat out. Oh no. Oh, you dead. Nice. Nicely done. Yeah, through the bushes. Through the bushes. Um, what about the graphics? I know we touched on this. How are you feeling about graphics? I think they're good. Um, there's like, I'll see some like anti. Oh, that's not what I want the prompt and i just want to click it. there's like some anti-aliasing yeah. stuff but again i'm on a regular ps4 yeah same and i know that stuff's not going to be perfect so i'm not gonna um kill it for it yeah i think i think the graphics are great i think they do a phenomenal job of using color like i'm, I'm trying to think of other games that use color Did you see as well you other than like straight like like I don't want to say kitty, but I want to say like like cartoonish or Nintendo games. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other realistic games that use color really well. It's mostly like the, the Naughty Dog games. Yeah, I was gonna say like marking will... climb points and stuff. Yeah, um, but this one just just uses a lot, it a lot for aesthetics, and I love it. Like there was a mission I was doing where I was going through a valley, and there were a lot of um, yellow blossom trees and a lot of yellow petals flying through the air. And it's just adds so much color and it makes the, the the scenery so vivacious. Yeah. And I really enjoy that. Um I taught a monster. Yeah, I think the graphics are great. I think the graphics are phenomenal. It's mostly just two big problems I have with it. Number one is performance. Which is it, it is somewhat tied to graphics. Yeah. You know, I, I don't I don't really I want it to be a hard thirty lock. Um thirty FPS. But it's not really getting there. It's not mine. Yeah. Um, and then the other problem I have, I uh, this is more of a gameplay, kind of a gameplay UX problem, but the graphics make it worse, which is that there are missions where you have to track footprints or where you're trying to find items in an environment. 
Mm -hmm. Or uh, there's missions where you're trying to spot enemies from a distance and hit them with a bow and arrow. And the graphics make the de the environment so detailed that it becomes very, very difficult to pick out the items, the enemies, the footprints. And that is something that's got to be fixed in gameplay. I don't think you tone down the graphics. I think you you make the footprints pop a little bit more or you you know you improve some modes or you make the um the item pickups light up from a longer distance and um it's it's something that i'm i'm definitely struggling with with this game um like i was just playing a mission earlier where i knew i had to find this guy's footprints and it took me 4 minutes walking around this area before I finally spotted the footprints on the ground. Because the ground has dirt texture, it has moving grass texture, it has every time you walk you kick up like grass dust behind you. So all of these moving pixels, and I'm trying to find footprints. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think it's, it's something similar, I, I think it's something that a lot of current gen and next gen games are going to have to deal with. Like we've talked about before about how excuse me, XCOM and XCOM 2 have that problem where their environments are so detailed that it can be hard to pick out what is cover, what is background, etc. Um, oh, different details like that. Yeah. Uh, what did you name your horse? No, Nobu? Noro? Nobu. That's what I did. I think that's what I did. I kind of like that. Did you take, you what know? color did you take? I took white. I don't know why. They had a white, black, and they had a gray. And it was like, why is the gray there? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even a good gray. It's like, what's what's going on here? You can't make it like a blonde brown? You can't make three interesting choices here? You got to make a clearly better choice. You're going to make an okay second choice and a who cares about the third choice. What are you doing? Oh, oh come on. That was me. I'm doing pretty good. Um, how about story? Um, I'm not. The only thing I remember about the story right now is that I'm uh, trying to save my uncle. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I think I think a lot of it is you're trying to save your uncle, and then there's like some side quest stories that are some are interesting, some are not, and then there's. It's, it's mostly about, like, character building, like, flashbacks and stuff to build up the main character. You know, like, the conflict he has. Have you done the part yet where you do stealth kills? Yes. Which was, yeah. like, so where he, very funny of him, like, trying to figure out he wants to either do it or not. Yeah. But I think it... I, I really enjoyed that, where it was like, this is against the samurai code. Yeah, but I kind of need to do it, and I think that's an interesting, interesting little uh, dilemma there for a character, and that, that goes a long way. What's something? Gain. What I get? Twenty-seven supply. Uh. 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 Not. Yeah, I think I think overall I'm enjoying the game. I'm just not quite as wild as I feel like I should be. How do you feel about the Assassin's Creed comparisons? You think they're warranted or uh, not warranted? I don't know. I feel like Assassin's Creed is always so claustrophobic. Like there's cities and you have to things to climb and jump, versus this yeah. is a much more uh, open environment. Uh, oh, excuse me. But, yeah, it's definitely more open. Um, uh oh, I, I think I think that there's things that definitely make the comparison feel warranted, like the outposts, um, the oh, what is my train of thought here? The outposts are more. Was that was that Far Cry? Yeah, first, that's more or was Far that, Cry. Yeah, and then that bled into Assassin's Creed, and then it bled into others. Um, 
trying to think some of the other warranted Assassin's Creed type. Yeah. I, Problem is, I, I don't I don't have a lot of Assassin's Creed experience, so. Yeah, I only have like one, two, and four. A little bit of origin. Where am I going? Yeah, I just have like a little bit of one and then origins. What, I can't cross this river? Oh, really? Come on. There's definitely, um, I can definitely, f I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted about the, the main complaint from our viewers was that it feels like, it feels like an old open world game. I think one of the most damning quotes was the open world, like, quest mechanics collect-a-thon feels like it's from 2015. And I think that's a little bit too harsh. I, I don't think it's groundbreaking. But I also, it doesn't feel that outdated. I think, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna put a hot take out there right now. This is a bit of a hot take. I think if you're a game reviewer and you have to review a lot of bad to mediocre open world games a dozen a year, year after year, then yeah, this is going to feel like more of the same. But that doesn't mean that it's outdated necessarily. It just means that it's not doing anything new. Wait, I just helped you. Oh, you know what I really want in this game? Oh. And I'm very surprised this game doesn't have is a lock on. Yes. That was the first thing I checked the controls. Yeah. To see if there was a too. lock on. When you're in like a boss fight or a mini boss fight, it has a, it has lock on, which is great, but it's like let me let me switch targets cuz like you just did, I do plenty of times where I'm in combat and then all of a sudden I'm slashing through empty air. And I'm like, no, let me just like switch target real quick. I do think that was kind of cool. That was bandits versus Mongols. So I was trying to help what I thought oh. were peasants. And he just attacked they were bandits. Oh, fox go. Yeah, follow that fox boy. Hi, fox. I followed one fox and I fell off of a. What, do I have to climb this tree? Uh oh. Are you running now? Oh. Have you uh, followed any birds yet? Birds? No, I can follow a bird. Yeah, there's like a gold. If you see a gold bird, you're supposed to follow it. But the problem I have is that it like it, it it. This is not the problem with it, but it'll like fly over a stream where you can't cross. You kind of have to find a different place to cross and then catch up with it. But it will always lead me towards like a quest or something. And then like, or a fight and I get there and I, it like takes me into the other thing and then the bird disappears. <laughs> so I can't like fully follow the bird. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah. Which is, uh, I don't, I don't know. It's, that that's something that would be hard to design for because like if I'd already completed those encounters or whatever, then the bird would just take me straight to the place. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, this is, this is nice. Like, the game looks great. I just don't think they planned the mechanics. You can change the music. And the interaction with the environment. Cinema bars. Sorry, I'm just... I haven't actually... Oh, you can pause the environment. That's cool. And change the weather. Boy. Oh, I made it later. Oh, but that looks cool. Good screenshot. Oh, wow. They really let you change some stuff. Uh, hide and then screenshot. Nice. Um, cool. Bleh. Excuse me. William Yosef, it's Crispers. Let me ask you a question. Ask me a question. If you take the complaints about this game as valid, basically that it's open world has like too much stuff, etc. It's not terribly interesting, blah, blah, blah. You're not sure what to do. How do you fix that? What's your proposal? Well, just, just pitch some ideas for how do you make a next gen open world game? Next gen open world game. Um, I don't really know. Pretty. Look at this. Um, I, 
how do you make a next gen? Uh, I'm trying to think if I uh, I'll get I, I've got one idea. Yeah, you get the ball rolling. So if you rem if you remember in um, Skyrim, they may have done this before as well, but Skyrim was kind of one of the first where I really noticed it. They had um, what what was called at uh, ZeniMax Online, and I'm assuming Bethesda used the same term. They called them vignettes, I believe, which are just kind of you're going along the road and there's a chance for one of these random encounters to spawn. And each of them has like a tiny story, you know, like it's a bandit or in Red Dead Redemption does the same thing, you know, like it's a bandit robbing a family, you know, or it's somebody saying, can you help me? And in reality, they're going to turn on you or it's somebody asking for a ride. Um, I think something something Red Dead Redemption 2 did well, but I don't think they quite did it well enough is um to go behind the scenes a little bit those vignettes at least how they worked in elder scrolls online was there were certain spots on the map and if you went near that spot there was a chance that a vignette would spawn and to spawn a vignette it would go to what's called a basically a loot table which is like a table of items and each of them has a percentage chance to be chosen from the table so if, if it's a flat percentage, then it's 20 items in the table and each of them has a 5% chance. Mm -hmm. So if I remember correctly, there was only like, let's say 20 vignettes in Elder Scrolls Online. 20 unique vignettes. So you would get one of these 20. But I think next gen, next gen is all about dynamic. It's all about procedural. So I think you could really put a lot of tech into that type of gameplay mechanic and have it be truly randomized procedurally generated and have all these vignettes that are spawning and have each of them be unique or tied to other things in interesting ways and have them impact back on the main story or, or other side quests or things like that um i think that's an example where you take an existing mechanic that has like clearly discernible limitations in current gaming and current gen but you are able to put the tech towards greatly expanding that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think making a world feel lived in, um, like you mm -hmm. can see things happening that you're not involved in, and you don't yes. have to resolve them. Red Dead Redemption 2 did that very well. And they followed up on it really well. Yes. Like you would see a person um, later or, I mean, they eventually got repetitive if you did them enough, but it was always <laughs> like, it was cool to walk into town. And the guy's like, Hey, you saved my cousin. Here's, here's credit at the store. Yeah. And like, he could tell yeah. you how you saved his cousin. Like, and also distance. Like, it's not like you saved him. And then he goes, here's credit at the store. It's not like you saw him five minutes later. It was like several hours later. Yeah. That you would run across that guy. And like the guy was bandaged uh, up or something. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so I think I, I agree with you 100%. It's all about like making the world feel using that tech to have the NPCs be persistent and active within the world and then also having them change throughout the game based on whether you're interacting with them or not. And another thing I, I, that literally it just came into my brain because it just happened. So I rode into this place from this direction. Yes. And there's now investigation things here. Which yeah. it had led me to the house to do them. Then I was attacked and then told me to come this way. But I think I should have been able to ride up and be like, oh, interesting. What are these? Like, like figuring out the mystery out of order. Yes, non-linear quest telling. Which I've been playing Disco Elysium. And that game does that really, really well. To the point where like it factors in. Like if I haven't talked to someone yet, like mm -hmm. I'll... I'll hear about them and then I can then go talk to them and bring in what the other people have told me about versus I've talked to a couple people and then gone back to the starting area where clearly you wouldn't have talked to those people yet if you were supposed to do it in order and I'm allowed to talk about them. Yeah. And like skip certain that's, sections. That's that, key. That game yeah. does that really well. Yeah. Cause if you think about it, a lot of quests are very, they're designed linear. It's step one, two, three, four, five. And you mm -hmm. can't side cut any of that. So let's use some tech 
let's use some next gen processing power to let you come in at any point in that quest um i'm trying to think of uh, what i would do for the environment i i think the wind in this is an excellent example of next gen uh open world games because like we're talking about it solves the problem of staring at the mini map um it's in world it looks beautiful it's always persistent like i I have something that i've noticed i still kind of have to get used to it is when the wind is blowing even if you can't see the visible gusts the dust in the air is casually blowing in the correct direction it's me so it's using like the full graphical processing power and the full aesthetic fidelity of the game as as a gameplay purpose which is great and i think there needs to be more stuff like that where you're solving problems that have kind of become rote within the open world genre like staring at the minute map like getting lost in an environment you know breath of the wild does a good job of kind of signposting you via vantage points yeah yeah it'll be interesting to see if cyberpunk 2077 solves many of those issues or they kind of fall the Mongol car into Lord what has been done already if your clan yeah that's that's a good point you can save my uncle and avenge your men clan adachi is my favorite thing about i uh, no, uh, never mind I won't. Here. A little, uh, yeah don't be racist <laughs> no it's not racist it's a little rated r but i'm not gonna say it now um, oh, okay. But there was a great uh, PR interaction with uh, the Cyberpunk Twitter where some guy said, like, is your game going to have this, this, and this, and this? And they just run it with a gif, like, are you okay? <laughs> like, it was, like, hyper-specific about uh, relationship interactions you could have in the game. <laughs> That's pretty funny. They were like, no? Yeah. I, I always think, uh, like, no, you go. You go ahead, baby. No, I was just going to say, I always think, like, you or I tend to, like, not... We don't overhype things, but we, like, talk about things, get excited about things. And I always, like, use that as a guide for, like, overhyping, hyping, and whatever. And then you get on Twitter and see people's, uh, like, reactions to not just Cyberpunk, but, like, any game that's going to come out. And they're like, man, this is going to be the best game ever. Never going to have to play a game ever again. I'm like... Yeah. You gotta calm down. Yeah, it's like when the reviews for uh, Ghost of Tsushima came out, this guy in one of the comment threads was like, was like, this is already my game of the year. And this was on like Tuesday or Wednesday. And somebody replied to him and they're like, the game hasn't even come out yet. Maybe, maybe wait to play it. And the guy, the first guy, to be clear, who was total rando, was just like, what are you presuming that I don't have an early copy? And it was like, you don't have an early copy. <laughs> you clearly don't. You're nobody. Oh, you should not have an early copy. And even if you did have an early copy, you shouldn't be saying things like, "This is my game of the year." It's like, dear lord, That's people, it calm down. That like sun coming through looks so mm-hmm. good. Game I'm trying to think so of um. Good. I'm thinking of like problems with the open world genre and that spurs the question of how would you fix it in the next gen one of them is is quests like it feels like a lot of side quests are kind of pointless they've just been added as fluff to pad the game time and it's really only the main quests that have good content but even then they're still kind of like like you mentioned very fairly linear Mm -hmm. so i was just trying to think of how I, I don't know, it's weird, because when I think about... I, the, the game that I personally think has the best quest, main and side quest of all time, is Yakuza 0. But they're not really doing anything different other than just having, like, weird, wacky, interesting, funny, compelling stories within the quest. But the quests themselves are not that crazy. So it's like... It's not even that it's next gen. They're just doing current gen very, very well. Yeah, and I'll say Yakuza does it really well. Like, the aspect they of that they do really well is the um, story side of it versus they don't do yeah. the gameplay variety as well because it's usually always, yeah. like, go buy something or go beat up some people 
or go find someone versus most games that have that problem they have plenty of gameplay variety but the reasons for doing it are always stupid and that's why you stop doing it so it's like a good combination of that um done mm -hmm. well uh, so something that i think this game may be building towards at least based on some of the early quest structure and and talking to people some of the characters the side characters in this game um I, i'm thinking of so i'm not like a marvel fanboy and so it doesn't really hit me as as heavily as as it does a lot of other people but those moments in avengers especially avengers endgame where all these characters show up and you're like you see black panther and it's not like oh that's black panther it's oh that's the guy we, there was this whole separate side movie and i love that movie so i look at this character and i know all of his backstory and therefore it makes the scene where they all come together so much better because you know the backstory you know the trials and tribulations of each of the characters mm -hmm. and it's not just main character and a bunch of random side characters so I think part of it could be having these side quests. I'm just thinking of the main quest is is the main quest follows that story arc, right? You've got like yeah. the rising action, exposition, rising action, the climax, and the crescendo, etc. And I think if you have side quests that really build into that, and I think that's what this game is doing, where you're learning so much and spending so much time with these side characters. And I'm hoping that towards the end of the game, it's you and these side characters taking back the island. Because that's going to feel so much more impactful. Having the main quest be composed of all these actions and characters that were built and fleshed out in the side quests. You know what? Um, you, you just reminded me, yeah. uh, Far Cry 2 does a really good job of bringing all the side quests and buddy characters back to the game like towards the conclusion of it like they oh, circle okay. everything back around that's great um, um it, yeah it's kind of like um to bring it back to yakuza zero because quite frankly it's a fantastic game if you haven't played it yet do it do it um the the business you know the business mini game in there where you're like owning businesses the real estate part um one of my favorite things about that i wasn't that crazy about that mini game but it's that if you if you have a side quest and you complete like a, there's like for example there's a side quest with this high school girl who is being pressured by bullies to sell her used underwear to businessmen and there's like there's like a line of two or three side quests where you're helping her out basically stand up for herself deal with the bully deal with like a creepy businessman all that if you complete that series of side quests then later on in the game, she shows up at your business and she says, hey, I need a job. Can I work for your real estate company? And so now in this mini game, you're not just moving pawns or saying like, I want this person with good stats to work here. You go, oh, that's the girl I helped. She's actually really good at hospitality. So I'm going to have her run the hotel. And it adds so much to what is like a rather ho-hum mini game because now you have a personal connection. Yeah, to the characters in it, until our home and I think I open world games. Sky. Thank you. I think the fall, the flaw that a lot of open world games fall into, is just thinking that it's all about content, right? It's all about how much content you have, how many NPCs, how much locations, what's the runtime, you know? And I think what they really should be focusing on is we can introduce a hundred characters in this game, like characters that you talk and learn about and interact with. And we should really be focusing on threading all hundred of those characters together. So they're interconnected, they weave together, and they tell a compelling story. Um, so it's not that quantity is a bad thing. It's a bad thing when it's all chaff, when it's all one-shot characters. Yeah. Thank you. Next gen, baby, that, and that's not even next gen. That's just, you know, good quest better, design. Yeah, quest design, better overall narrative design. And the other thing is, I hate like when I a side quest to me is the length of a main quest quest, but the story is scrunched down to have all the arcs within usually one side quest. And yes. so many yeah. games call things side quests that I don't think fit that. They're not side quests. They're they're like little missions. Like a good, healthy side quest has a lot of content yes. to it. Yes. 
Yeah. Man. Ooh, fire. Oh, I you killed a water a buffalo game. when I first started this game. It ran it's into easy, the fire. Right? It's easy, right? Making video games? Yes. I. It's weird. I've always wanted to make a video game, and I... Uh, I've always like I always think about like trying to like work on something, but it'll never happen. It's it's not worth it. It's a hundred percent not worth no. it. <laughs> the type of person who can make their own one dev game and have it be good and have it be completed and released is like oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's I, like it's only worth it if it's successful. There are plenty of people who do that and they fall flat on their face because it's not successful. They didn't do a good job. Yeah, I think I could do it in the capacity of over a long period of time and I'm doing it for fun. I'm not doing it with any intention yeah. of making money from it. Um, no, I couldn't do that either. Because the other thing is that requires a level of commitment of like never questioning yourself enough to stop. And for me, it's one of the reasons why I'm such a slow writer is because I'm constantly questioning myself to the point that I stop writing. Yeah. I get that all no, the time. At least for me, I couldn't do that. Because I, every time I have to do, not have to do, but I do a video for Jake to edit, I always like write the bulk of everything, and then it's like the last two paragraphs that I just question the whole thing, and then I don't send him the, the full VO until Saturday afternoon because I procrastinated so much that I like don't, I don't think the video is going to be good, but probably not going to be good. But. I mean, none of the videos are good. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> to take refuge here. Yeah, I'm actually like getting really into this next-gen open-world game design idea now, though. Yeah, we should. See, we could design a game. We just couldn't make it. Yeah, but I feel like it's kind of... I don't think that exists. Like, I'm thinking of, like, in the board game community, you can totally, like, design a game and even just have an idea. Or even, like, a movie. You could have a, you could have a treatment or a one page pitch for a movie. And if you get it in front of the right people, you can sell it on that, you know? And you can even hand off. You can say, hey, you pay me $50,000 for this movie idea and you do all the work, right? You take it, you do all the screenplay and everything. You can't do that in video games, you know? No, not really, that, yeah. that, that, that's not part of the industry. Pitching is pitching an idea and then, and then selling the idea and letting go of it is not part of the industry. But I feel, yeah. you know, now that I'm talking about it, I feel like it should, because I see a lot of fantastic game ideas on Twitter. Just, like, throwaway game ideas. Yeah. I feel like people joke about that stuff a lot, too. Thanks. I'm also, um, just to rewind just a little bit, talking about quests, I'm trying to think of my favorite types of quests, and I think um, one of them is, like, location-based quests. So I can't really think of a good... I'm trying to think of like GTA Lord Five. Hello, I was just remembering the word. But that's probably not best. I'm trying to think of, of quests where the there is a location in the game, the body. and you see that location over and over again, and you keep driving by it or going by it, etc. And it's like it's like compelling to you, but you know you can't get there, or you know you can't really do anything with it yet. I mean, other than Hyrule and Castle then, and Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm also thinking of Just Cause 3. They have these offshore platforms, exactly what I need. like offshore oil platforms. Mm -hmm. And you can get there, but it's not super exciting. But then there's missions where they're just like, hey, we need you to infiltrate this. And it like becomes a whole set piece for this mission. Good to see you. And I don't think every quest Thank should you. be like that, but I love quests that are like, a here's a location. You've been dying one. to get there. You've been sorry, dying to do it because it looks so cool and you keep going past, you keep going past it. We're teasing you with it. And now's the time. We're going to have a big set piece mission quest mm -hmm. in this location. And I love that. I, I don't think every quest can do that. I think it's got to be a small percentage, but I just love the idea of it's tying the environment to the quest and also teasing the player through. I feel like crack, uh, Crackdown 1, I think, does that pretty well. Yes, I agree. Towers and stuff and yeah. seeing an island. Yeah. Oh, I got gifts. A new gift available. Visit the nearest gift. I mean, that gift. Glowering, glowering warrior? Glowering, glowering. Crafted and perhaps I have to Here. What about um? Ooh, I got a mask. 
What about collectibles in open world games? Uh, I, How do we feel? It depends. If I'm usually... Hmm. If it's something the game keeps track of for me, I like it. If it doesn't, I don't like it. Well, what do you mean by keeps keeps like, track of? There's a there's a place I can go to that tells me. Um, oh, how many you have? Yeah, and it's even better if it's broken it down by location. Mm -hmm. Or, but, like I just want to know, because yes. if I don't know, now you know, then I'm just yeah. like blind. I think, just to say it, just to get out of the way, I think a large part of my interaction with collectibles is how easy it is to like visually find the item in the game and then interact with it to pick it up because if it's something like red dead redemption 2 and i know you disagree with me on this but if it's something like red dead redemption 2 where it is a pain to pick things up or if it's a, if it's like in this game where it's hard to physically spot items in the environment and you have to be right on top of it before it pops a ui item then I, I hate the collectible. Doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter what it gets me. If it's a pain to just physically find it, look at it, and pick it up, then I don't want to be with it. Yeah. But assuming the game has that, that that's not a problem. How do you do collectibles well? And, and I agree with you 100%. You got to have some place of looking at it and going, what's my yeah. progress and what's the total? There has to be a, a reward for it. Yes, a worthwhile reward. A worthwhile reward. Mm hmm. And my only like other thing was, sorry, before you go, is um, the reward at the end can't be something that would have helped you to find the thing in the first place. Yes. I hate when yeah. games do that. I was going to say, I want an incremental reward, like the, um, is it the Kurok Seeds? The Kurok Seeds don't get you anything until the very end, right? No, no, you get, you, it increases every... That's right. Like four of them. That that I would say that's is a right. good version of a collectible. That's a good one. Yes, but but uh, it's a bad uh, version of telling you where things are. Yeah. Whereas like pigeons in GTA Four are the worst because mm -hmm. all you get is an achievement for it. I think that's it. Yeah. It's 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 like pointless. There are clothing merchants. So I want it to be I want it to be incremental. I want you to be actually getting worthwhile stuff. It can't just be an achievement hunter type I'm thing. Going. Oh, she's outside the temple the opposite way you came in. I was trying to see if I wanted to buy a new hat. It was a dope straw hat I saw at one place. And oh, well, not every place has the merchants. Yeah, and this lady's, lady's just uh, armor. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, there may not be a merchant. Okay, I'll, let me finish That's up this it. mission, and then uh, we, can cook, we can plug yeah. out of here. That's the other thing about this game is that the map like i'm at a location and i've been there before and i want to open the map and zoom in enough to be like oh the armor is over there in the northeast corner doesn't let you do that it'll tell you who's there but it won't tell you where they are and that's that's annoying to me um yeah i think collectibles i think they need to be incremental in terms of incremental progress instead of something big all at the end at least for me before the assassins and it's got to be worthwhile. That doesn't prove his guilt. I noticed this game does but the think... good thing uh, <laughs> where the person you're following matches your speed and you don't awkwardly catch up with them. Very happy yes. about that. Yes. Anyways, you were saying. I also think the collectibles, they have to be completely 100% optional. Mm -hmm. You know, give me, give me gameplay upgrades. But at the same time, let me finish the game without doing it you know if i don't want to do it the collectible stuff then let me get away with it let's follow the wolf to his den um yeah so you can get down here what about what about exploration so a lot of games this game included which is kind of funny because it's mostly the ubisoft formula now we can't be does the you unlock a location you complete some sort of objective some challenge location and it unlocks part of the map for you you've got gta where it's all about like gating you 
well, five didn't do this, but the previous ones did where it's like, you complete this area. Okay, now you can move on to the next area. What are your what are your preferences when it comes to open world exploration? Like like, like did he see us? uncovering the map slash accessing new areas. Um, let's go. It depends because if if it's an area I didn't know about, then I'm not Ooh, yeah. too worried about not it. Not as mad about it. Yeah, or yeah. if there's a good story reason, like Red Dead Redemption did the thing where it's like, hey, we're wanted back there, heavily wanted. Mm -hmm. um, yep. That we can't go back east that way or east west um yeah west but yeah i would say like as long as it's not inhibiting oh no oh, don't see me it's not inhibiting my gameplay experience uh because it also depends like if there's enough to do where i am mm -hmm. and the terms of unlocking the next area are spelled out for me yeah then i'm not as worried about it i think i'm a fan of the soft like the gating by enemy levels like fallout yes. new vegas did where basically you can go anywhere you want but there you're being guided along a path based on enemy levels yeah you're gonna die if you um, go here yeah but but if you do that i think you definitely have to this this factors into combat design etc but i think you need to have it so that if you're good enough at the game, you can go to those higher level areas and still survive. You know, I, I think maybe you get one shot at the most severe levels, but it never feels like cheating. It always feels like you've got a chance, as slim as it may be. You've still got a chance to survive. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, this is going to be slightly controversial. But I think I actually really like the the Ubisoft system of you know where these outposts are, or at least they're easy to find and see at a distance. And you know you just have to go there, climb the tower, you know, kill the enemies, whatever. And then it unlocks the map. I, I love doing that. Mm -hmm. And if they do it right, and there's plenty of Ubisoft games that do it right, it's like, oh, I know I'm in an unknown area but I see a campfire over there. So I'm going to go over there. That's going to be an enemy camp. I'll clear it out. And I've opened up this area for me, even though I'm, I'm able to wander around the area. Now it's going to reveal the area to me. And I really enjoy that. Yeah. I think I, some of their games do it better than others, but I think that system is, I don't know. A lot of reviewers are like, it's tired. It's done. And I'm like, it's not tired. I feel like it's perfected. Yeah. You know, it's not perfect. But that type of gameplay mechanic, they've gotten very good at it. Um, and I, I like that idea. Because the other way is, this this game seems like it's just, you're going along a path, or wherever you go, it does very little. Like, it reveals a very narrow path. And then sometimes if you do a location, it'll reveal a little bit more. But I feel like, for all the places I've been, the map is still fairly foggy foggier than it should be. Oh, I can't see. Oh, no. Oh, this is a tough, tough fight. I thought I did the... The, um... Standoff? The standoff. You release it when they're about to attack, right? Yeah, but they've got to be, like, mid-swing. Yeah, I think he feigned me anyway. Your best warrior. And there's some abilities to unlock. There's two levels of it. I've already unlocked it, so you can unlock it pretty quick. Where if you're in a standoff, after you defeat the first guy, up to two more enemies will then come in, and you basically do like a three-person standoff, like each one in a row. So it's it's pretty nice because you can just do a standoff, and as long as you do it right, you can take three people out in the standoff. I will say the samurai combat in this, it looks very authentic. I don't know if it's authentic or not, but it, like the stances, the techniques, the swings, it looks phenomenal. Yeah, it looks really good. It just flows. My problem so is well. I keep I keep treating the spear attack as a as a thing I do, and then it like auto. Does it? It's you just got to keep getting out of the way. No, yeah. what? And, and oh. 
And some enemies, it's like... They'll do one attack, or they'll do, like, two or three charge attacks in a row. So it's... Yeah, like, I'm used to that that little shiny diamond thing comes up, and then I hit it, mm -hmm. and I'm good to go, but it's not. It's, I gotta do it until the guy's clear. Yeah. I have had um, a couple AI issues where... Like if I'm if I'm fighting a group, I'll like back off and kite like two or three of them towards me, and I'll take out one of them, and then the other ones like turn around and they're not quite retreating, they're just kind of like going back to their original position, but they still act like they're in combat, and it's real weird. It's like I have to re-engage with them to get them to, to start fighting me again. Whoa. Yeah, it's are that. you? What? How are you? How are you dodging that? The side B or side circle? Yeah, side circle. I but I feel sure like I never right, dodge it, out of the way like, of it. Yeah, it's you're you're not like the last two three times you got hit, you didn't dodge at all. Yeah. I'm not saying you didn't try, but your character didn't didn't move like a dodge. Yeah. Combat. It's, it's, it's good. I like the combat. Oops. There you go. That's good. Yeah. I feel like sometimes when I do it, it doesn't realize I'm doing it. Uh, have you gotten any good at parrying? How's the parry? That's just right when they attack, right? Yeah, but you can't be holding the, the dodge. It's dodge, like dodge. you yeah well, you basically hit it right before they attack. Yeah. I'm not I'm not good at the timing of it. But uh, a tip I heard is if you want to practice it, is you just you hold down the block the entire time, and then right before you're supposed to parry, you let off it and then hit it again. So that way you're you're at least blocking. Yeah, I feel but like the, still the other thing I'm not doing is I'm always trying to parry and I'm never blocking. Yeah, I've, I'm starting to get... I usually only block if things are getting hairy. Because usually I, I, I'm more of a dodger. I just dodge out of the way. And then I'm okay. It's also, I just forget to heal. I do like that it pops up at the bottom to remind you. Oh, that's a good parry. I was getting too get greedy. Face me. At least I could keep getting to do this cool opening part. Yeah, that's good practice. I was going to make a, um, a gif. I'm just going to describe it to you. And it's, um, it's like a... Okay, so here's the gif, right? It's in three parts. Part one, it's a samurai, and he's staring at you, and he's got a sword, right? He's got his hand on his sword, you know, like the fight's about to start. Part two is he does the thing with his sword where he, like, pulls it out an inch and then closes it, as if he's saying, like, I took it out so quick and put it away. That's how fast I am. Yeah. You know that image? Part three is... Part three is the World Trade Center falling. <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> That's so good. 
<laughs> it's a pretty good one. Uh, uh, if I wasn't lazy, I would make that. There's so many people. Something else I've noticed, and I'm about 90% certain this is true, is that if you break somebody's shield, but then you leave them alone and you come back, their shield has, I don't want to say it's regen, but it like resets. So like if you break somebody's shield, you got to get hits in on them and kill them if possible. Ooh. Oh no! Oh, there's still ah! a guy. There's still a guy. I was, I was doing a cool move. I think there's, I think there's still two. Oh no! Oh no! Don't let me die, lady. Just kill him. Oh. oh, you almost oh, died right I there. I really did. <laughs> Good job. I'm very sweaty right now. Um, okay, let me just... Is this the end of the quest? I assume so. Yeah, yeah, you're very close to the end of it. Oh, Where that's nice. There's nowhere to run, Sovin. What about um setting? What do you think the, the setting of a next-gen open world game is in terms of, I feel like we, you and I, we have, we have laid out the, the skeleton of a very good next-gen open world game, but what is the setting? What is the premise? Cold War, Russia. You're a American spy in Moscow. You have us who uh, yes, that's about as far as I've gotten. I think but a good Cold caveat. War open game. Would caveat. Sorry, not caveat. Twist. Twist. Halfway through. Halfway through. Must be removed. Halfway through. Or I want to say maybe just a side chunk. A decent side chunk. You're a Russian spy in DC. That's pretty good. Yeah, you flip over a little bit. He was never going to talk. Um. That's pretty good. I was trying to think of. Uh, did you see Ad Astra? No. Don't. It's bad. It's pretty bad. Um, I heard it's daddy issues. It's not daddy issues. It's like, it's a very pretentious movie. It's a B movie on the same tier as The Core in terms of science and story, but that is trying way too hard to be an art film while having the same cheesy plot line elements to it. So it's like, no, you gotta don't 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 act like you're a serious movie when you still got all this like pseudo nonsense BS in here, and you're like resolving plot line, lines with just like the wave of a hand. Um, but there's like a cool element where like it's like near future moon colonization, so there's like there's like a a decent sized moon base, and there's like the U.S. military there, but then you also have like the Chinese military there, and then there's like it's developed high enough that pe some people have broken off and become like moon bandits where they just have their own like pirate outpost. So I'm just trying to think, I don't think that's a perfect, but I, I like the idea of it's like moving in to take control. The moon's been colonized for a hundred years. So you've got moon bases and other stuff like that. I'd like that. But you also have this bit of wilderness going on. Wild West theme to it. I also feel I like, think, I don't know if that's going to be, I think the environment's going to be too stale for that, but, but I think that's, that's a good, story setting i feel like open world games don't embrace the multiple maps as much anymore yeah maybe they should like i i thought uh mgs5 did that pretty well where you had like africa and afghanistan and they were like yeah. different enough and and um although i personally didn't like it i know it did it well uh, horizon zero dawn where it wasn't a single open world, it was oh, open world areas. I didn't know that. And they were doing different chunks of it. Yeah, I'd like more games like that too. Like, I hate. There's some games that would do that are open world that would do better if they weren't. Mm -hmm. Um. 
it's like Anachronox, that game is really good, but it's like, it's a somewhat open world game, but you're confined to areas. So it's like, yes. first you're on the space station, then you fly to a, a like another planet, and you're in a city. So it's like, yeah. that sort of thing. But, folks, um, um No, don't you do it. I have a really great idea. Here's my great idea. Okay, you go for Red it. Red Dead Redemption ride. 2, and Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption. I really like that you... The main character dies at the end of Red Dead Redemption, and so you switch over to his son. But I don't think they did enough change with the environment to oh, really show that. Red Dead Redemption. So so I would love, I would really, really love for like a generational open world game. Let's call it, it's three acts. Ooh. Each act is like a generation or two removed from the previous one. And you're in the same environment, but it's drastically changed. So I'm thinking, like, you ever read East of Eden by Steinbeck? No. It's really good. It's it's following several generations, and and they're they're moved to California, and so like they get to California and they're like early establishment, and then it like moves on 50, 60, like 30 years, and like you know the settlements are established. It's past gold rush, so they're kind of settling down, and it's like 30, 40 years after that. And they're like, oh, yeah, there's the, you know, the ice plant that was opened by my grandfather. You know, in the in Act 1, you know, I helped us move to the town. Act 2, I helped him get the construction site. You know, get the materials for that construction site. Act 3, that plant is open and it has a big mission in it. Mm -hmm. I would really love to see a single environment that has evolved through generations and characters that have evolved. And you kind of have this multi-generation, like uh, Place Beyond the Pines. You seen that movie? No, I've always wanted to. Oh, it's fantastic, but the the movie's basically cut in half. There's like two characters in the first half, and then the second half is about those two characters' sons and how they interact with each other. And I would love a video game equivalent of that because because the other thing is that it carries these tones and these themes like from one character to the other, and it becomes like a family sin, a family theme, a family struggle in a way. So even though they're different characters, even though the environment has changed and the circumstances have changed, they're still dealing with these same sins of the past or themes, you know, a mistake that ripples down generations. I think that's, I, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I feel like that is, that's, that's the, that's, that's the announced trailer gimmick right there is yeah. this is the same location over a hundred year span and over multiple generations. I like And that. the changes you... The choices you make in each in each act drastically change the following acts. You know, you make a decision in act one and it changes how your family is portrayed or seen by the community in act. And there's two. like a side quest where and you can invest money in a business. Yes. It does well. Yeah. Oh god. Whoa. Ooh, Will, good. I think we did it. I, I think, think we, we can gonna... outro now. We solved we solved video games. I think we can pull we gotta pull down this archive so no one gets that. <laughs> yeah no one's Kill watching it. this anyways folks i'm gonna transition over to me and mini ian um thanks for watching tonight uh gibson ray thanks for popping by um playing some ghost of tsushima you know these like day quote quote unquote day of streams never do as well because there's more popular people out there playing these um and i'd rather play something else because i like playing well, these games by myself well let's be honest none of our streams do well <laughs> Yeah, but I want to say, like, like our astroneers and all sorts of stuff get, like, five or six people. Yeah. Like, I feel like, like if you want we... a main game coverage, you go to someone else. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like when we bow down and we beg for it by playing a, lot, a big title on launch day, we don't get the numbers that we think we should, yeah. considering we're begging. Yeah, for. when I get on all fours and beg to take the release day. Take it. Take Anyways, it. folks, this has been the Pixel Ghost of Tsushima. Thank you for watching. I was your host, Will Crosby. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find Ian Gibson. That's him right here. You can find him on Twitter at Think Gibson. You can find all of our content, subpixelfilms.com. It'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel. Also, all of our socials are at Subpixel Team on Facebook, Instagram, and not Mixer. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Mixer is going down next week. We're going to do some sort of special stream for that. 
Oh, that is um, next week. Yeah, it is next week. Tuesday. What is Tuesday? Something that I think we should talk about because I'm not I'm not as crazy. About oh, it Zach's very excited for that. So no, we are doing that. Okay, we'll do that. He's very excited. Thursday. Thursday. Gunpla. Gunpla. Yes. You know, I started a gunpla, but I'm going to yeah. start a, a a rush job for the uh, Saturday. Okay. I think we need to announce Saturday right here, right now, when nobody's watching. What's Saturday? Dungeons <gasps> and no, that's Sunday. Dragons. Sorry, Sunday. But in place of our normal Saturday night stream, we're doing a Sunday day stream, multi-hour. Yes. We gotta. Should we come up with a name for that? Maybe we don't come up with a name for it. We come up with a name with it yeah. after this. I gotta figure that out too, because Zach can't make the Sunday one. So I, I can move around, etc. That that was, that was the end thing. I was thinking maybe we do move it to Saturday, but I will let you know. Um, he's very excited to make Tuesday work. So let me text him. Figure that out. Yeah, I'm fine with Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, so I'll find out. What else? I think that's it. Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, just one more thing. Friday, July 24th, it's the start of the Summer Olympics. So <sighs> look forward oh, to that. Very excited for the Summer Olympics. <sighs> I'm excited for, man, I'm not excited for anything. Folks, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Thanks boy. for watching. We'll see you sa Tuesday. What's today? Today's Saturday. Tuesday. Monday. Monday. Supposedly the last week in July, I'm going back to full time. I kind of doubt it. But tentatively, Monday and Wednesday are the last time I can stream during the day. Um, mm. So I might, I might do something weird you know, on Monday or Wednesday. So I'll let you know. Don't you have a lunch hour? That's true. <laughs> Probably not. The startup. I don't get anything. Ugh, that's crazy. I just wish I had a different job. Anyways, folks, we will be back on Tuesday. And don't give me that look. Until then.